Why, hello, students from around the world. This is Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading. I do, in fact, hope you're having a fantastic and phenomenal Friday. Uh, yesterday was a big day, and I'll just kind of sum it up with this, ladies and gentlemen. Real Life Trading is here to stay, and I am quite excited about that. Uh, both parties settled, and it is now done. Um, there's a lot of confidential things I'm unable to release. Uh, obviously, it's not as simple as that. There's a lot of other things that go on. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be great. So at this present moment in time, uh, real life trading is going to enrich lives and hopefully change and better the future of students from around the world. And I'm very excited about that. Let's look at the market really quick uh, before this long weekend. I hope you guys have a good uh, plans for this weekend. Me and some friends and Ashley are going uh, to the cabins out in Chattanooga, Tennessee and enjoy the cold weather and decompress a little bit after yesterday. Uh, clear my head, come up with some new fun things and strategies and emails and excitements and stuff and, uh, you know, do life. It's going to be a good time. I'm stoked. But uh, this weekend, again, the markets close on Monday, so keep that in mind. So there's no trading floor on Monday and uh, back, to, back to business on Tuesday. So this particular move today is very, very interesting, right? We do have a good, good support right about here. I don't anticipate us taking out this low. Uh, we did make a little bit of a lower low from this pivot. And that's kind of what I was referring to. So I'm kind of ready to buy the balance at this particular point if we start making a higher high on Tuesday. Realistically, my thought process is something like this could be forming and shaping up. And getting into some longer term spread down here might be a little bit more advantageous. But I'm kind of expecting for the stocks uh, to maybe do something like this and then kind of break out higher. That's kind of my goal, thought, and perception of what could happen on the market. But I'm definitely not bearish, at least yet. DIA, same type of thing, right? Buy the bounce, expecting a lower low to shock some of the weak bulls. I think that kind of happened a little bit yesterday. Uh, the QQQ, same type of thing. So the Qs, um, you're a little bit, a little bit more of a strong support there, and. Uh, you know, if we do close below 99.26, I can anticipate a slight pullback on the market or on the queues specifically. But again, the queues probably some type of you know descending tri triangle channel thing, uh, and then maybe break out in mid to late February potentially. IWM also looks kind of kind of juicy, giant lower. Um, shadow back here that we kind of bounced off on that buying pressure. So maybe some bull put spreads or some put sales or something on the IWM down in the 112 region. And uh, again, hopefully that uh, will continue to kind of bounce and make some higher highs. But I'm still kind of bullish to neutral on the market and don't really see any reason not to at this present point in time. So I'm really excited to see how and if that does in fact um, shape up the next few days. So hopping over to the Real Life Trading Facebook page, here it is, make sure you guys are there and liking it. Uh, Bob wants to look at FTR and the market review, so I'll hop over here to FTR, kind of take a sneak peek at FTR, and Frontier Communication, or yeah, Communication. So we have a month or so until earnings, and I do kind of like today's candle. This was actually, in my opinion, a pretty bullish gap. We gapped and opened above the high of that black candle, so we opened and closed above the prior day black candles close. So that's showing some pretty significant bullish strength in my opinion on Frontier Communications. Got some support, um, resistance, let's see here. Got a little bit of a target in the uh, range of about 7, 16 I guess. This resistance is kind of concerning to me, right about there. I kind of would like a close above that price, and that's probably what I'm gonna place in. Uh, if we get a close above there on Frontier, I at least would be a smidge more bullish than bearish. And, you know, you know, they got the higher lows, you got the gorgeous candle, maybe even a rising three-ish rest after battle type of pattern. So if we close 715 strong resistance, and my thought process would be we probably trade up in here and kind of pound out sideways a little bit until earnings. And then either likely gap down or gap up, uh, maybe significantly big. So that'll be, you know, kind of interesting to keep an eye on. Um, so we'll see. Yoav wants, uh, he posted uh, PCP uh, on the Real Life Trading Facebook page. And PCP was a pretty interesting gap today. It was actually a fade, 
which means it trades in the opposite direction of the gap. And realistically, the why behind this gap is because there were so many bearish traders, right? You had all these black candles, stock gaps down. So you have so many people going bearish previously that when the stock does gap down, those bearish traders buy to cover and lock in some of their profit, causing the stock to kind of bounce. So that's kind of what happened on PCP. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on this one to potentially fill some of the gap a little bit more. Activision, uh, Blizzard, it was an ACTI. AVTI. Uh, now I gotta find Activision. Maybe it's A C T V. Oh, I forgot the ticker for Activision. AVTI. AIVT. <laughs> Snapdragons. Well, when you look at Activision, um, AC something, if and when you find it, it was a beautiful gap today. Uh, I know I'm probably going to get a few. There it is. ATVI. Man, I was all over the board. Phenomenal, phenomenal gap. I want to give a giant shout out to Cheryl, Prasad, Yoav, Farouk, Arthur. Um, it's just a perfect, perfect trade. Gorgeous, gorgeous gap. And believe it or not, it actually was not a perfect gap and go per the um, sentiment of the candles, right? The five minute candle yesterday was white. So that being said, this was a retest gap. And look at the retest. Uh, boom, boom. I mean, here's your entry, here's your stop, home run. That's a solid three, four, maybe even five R trade. A lot of students locked in a lot of profit on that trade, um, end up getting trailed out up here somewhere. I think that's just simply fantastic. So if you got a chance to take Activision Blizzard, good for you. There were so many opportunities the last few days on financials uh, and Bank of America, and Best Buy, just really, really beautiful. So let's go look at Apple really quick. Uh, Apple did have a little bit of a sell-off last two or three days, some black candles, and I have been in a protective put. Um, once we broke below this gap, it actually continued even farther, and I'm kind of anticipating it to potentially bounce a little bit where it is, but I don't know how long it's going to hang out here. 103.65 is really a good resistance, so I am in puts on Apple uh, short term. These are protective puts. So my expectation is for it to trade down to 103.65, potentially bounce, and then we'll see what happens on earnings to see if it gaps up or gaps down. And whatever it does, um, you know, it'll probably do it pretty strongly. So my guess is a gap up, but you know, I really truly do not know. Uh, this is a great, great breakout right here. Beautiful breakout of the all-time high. This now looks like a nice little rotation of that. And again, if we get a good gap up off of that, could be a really, really good move overall. Uh, as a follow-up on the trading room, uh, so that you guys know, Weekly's Wednesday is really, really becoming a very, very sought-after day to be in the trading floor. Weekly's Wednesday is when we go and look at um, credit spreads that are expiring that same week. So last Wednesday in the market, uh, we set up a bunch of different credit spreads. Probably the most popular one was this bear call spread on Tesla. It was a 200-205 that we set up Wednesday, 200-205. They expired this Friday, and that was approximately a 7% return for two days. Not too shabby at all. So my thought process on Tesla now, now that spread has expired worthless, is um, a little bit of a pennant pattern type of thing, maybe one or two days sideways, and if we start making some lower lows, uh, I'm still bearish on Tesla. Next target is about 178.10. Amazon, we had another uh, bull put spread on Amazon below the support level. We had one expiring today, and we have one expiring next week. The 282, 50, 280 bull put spread. Uh, so that 284.29, very, very strong support, keeping a close eye on that one. Netflix today, really good gap. Uh, keep your eyes on it because it did open above the high of a black candle and it is kind of closing with this neckline. Um, Tommy Manet was pretty bullish on Netflix towards the end of the day on the real life trading uh, trading floor. And realistically, on Weekly Wednesday, we did have a 335, 340 bear call spread that we exited today um, about two and a half, three hours ago for break even. So we didn't lose anything at all on that particular spread, which was great. You might have even had a little bit of a profit depending on, you know, after commissions, depending on your broker. But this is an interesting gap. We had another spread down here that expired today. Robert Meek had a 310, 305 that expired today. Um, 
Pat Kaufman had a 310 put sale that expired today. So a lot of good bullish pressure on Netflix. Looks like it might bounce. And I'm excited to see what happens on earnings. Google, same thing. Nice little bullish engulfing candle. We got uh, into this analysis, 485, 480 bull put spread on Google. And uh, that's at the moment playing out really, really nicely. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, we are in analysis on a uh, iron condor as of today. Was in a bear call spread recently legged in. So there's a lot of good spreads going on. It's kind of what I'm getting at. <laughs> a lot of good spreads. Directionals, eh. Uh, January might be a good month for spreads and day trading. And that's, I mean, really a perfect uh, description of what the trading floor is about. It's a great blend. It's a good 50-50 of day trading and swing trading. And I'm just excited that uh, Weekly Wednesday has become such a big hit. So either way, students, all of the success of real life trading is 100% due in part to your guys' enthusiasm, energy, and love for the market and love for people. And all I can say to all parties involved in the lawsuit, uh, I wish you the most aspirationally successful future and um, have a wonderful great life ahead. And to everyone else uh, at Real Life Trading, thank you so much for the support. You guys are absolutely sensational. And Real Life Trading is here to stay. We're not going anywhere because we are real life trading. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, remember, love life, live life, and trade it.